It's Wednesday, January 12th, and the time for your Bobby List today morning news update. Security personnel at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital on high alert as police investigate threats to staff at the medical facility. That's according to the hospital's acting director of medical services, Dr. Clyde Cave, who was responding to a video circulating on social media in which staff of the pediatric department are being threatened with grievous bodily harm. Dr. Cave said due to the hospital's commitment to patient privacy and confidentiality, officials cannot speak to any allegations made. But he made it clear that threats against the safety and well-being of staff are being taken very seriously. He also assured the public that the QEH team remains committed to providing safe, quality health care to Barbadians and visitors alike despite the current COVID environment and other challenges. The Alliance Party for Progress is promising to implement a model of governance, a culture of democracy, and the outworking of institutions which it says will demonstrate that power resides in the hands of the people if elected in the January 19th general election. Party leader Bishop Joseph Atherley gave the assurance as he outlined a 10-point plan, which he said included people-centered initiatives that bring meaningful benefits, a governance model that works, a growth model that results in shared prosperity for all, the elimination of corruption, and the expansion of ownership opportunity in Barbados, among other things. Bishop Atherley outlined other plans during the APP's virtual presentation of its slate of candidates last night. The philosophy of the Alliance Party for Progress is this. We must move beyond being stewards and become owners in Barbados. So the pursuit of mass-based ownership in Barbados is a premium objective for this party, which I have the honor to lead, and that's a commitment we make to you. Number nine, the building out of a democracy in which power in real and actual terms is resided in the hands of the people. It resides with the people. That is what republic means. Real power is reposed in the hands of the people. Democracy also implies that. We in Barbados have now become accustomed and seemingly sometimes contented with a situation where power comes to the people once every five years. In this instance, for whatever unknown reason, it has come in the middle of a pandemic three and a half years early. The people have had no say and will be exposed to possible infection through spread of the Omicron virus, admittedly by the officials among us. But we promise you, a model of governance, a culture of democracy, the outworkings of institutions which will clearly demonstrate that power resides in the hands of the people. Now, the former opposition leader said the APP will be a party where people's participation will be reflected in how it governs. A government must become an instrument that brings about meaningful change. Several of the policies to which I just made reference may fall into the realm of things we have heard before. Some of them do, for sure. We will always admit that. There's hardly, every, everything, there's hardly anything which is totally new. But you know this. What matters or what makes the difference is the implementation. And if the implementation leads to radical and revolutionary change, then we are serving a purpose as a government. Barbados's main industrial development agency is promising to pursue a major wave energy project while helping to build out of the export potential of bioenergy firms on the island. Chief Executive Officer of Export Barbados Mark Hill made the disclosure on Tuesday as he congratulated officials of five startup firms who took part in the Bloomer Clean Tech incubation program. Hill did not disclose how soon a wave energy pilot project will begin, but indicated that, that plans to pursue this area had started. The Bloom 6, as a single component of export properties, is built in the life science sector expansion plan. 
The data has been indicated that our blind creates potentially a competitive advantage light within the life sciences. Our material resources, orientation, comparatively range, competitiveness, and on top, export potential all paint a clear picture of opportunity within the life sciences. This opportunity is well positioned within our policy environment. As the government of our business set the 23rd transformation order of 100% renewable energy, power and carbon neutral economy. With this view in mind, export our business is seeking to further expand the new brand to include the establishment of industrial scale bioenergy products such as hydrogen, activated carbon, and these other forms of technology that we can export into the global market. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. news from other region, Bahamian Prime Minister Philip Davis says his government has no intentions of reinstating curfews or lockdowns in the country as it continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm relying on the Bahamian people. Right? We know that we are best when we are in trouble. We come to each other's rescue. I'm trying to sensitize the Bahamian people that you're adopting the protocols that we have in place that minimizes the spread. If they adopt that, we'll be helping each other. And so there's no need, in our view, to lock down or for curfew. What, is, what we need to do is be responsible one to another. What else we should be doing? Because we have public education is starting. We have giving a free mask. We have free testing. <laughs> Right, we have strengthened the restrictions coming into our borders. What else would they want to? We have, we have engaged more doctors, we have engaged more nurses. What else would they want us to do? And finally, the global economy is entering a pronounced slowdown amid the fresh threats from COVID 19 variants and the rise in inflation, debt, and income inequality. That's according to the World Bank Group, which said this could endanger the recovery in emerging and developing economies. The January 2022 Global Economic Prospects Report shows global growth is expected to decelerate from 5.5% in 2021 to 4.1% in 2022 and 3.2% in 2023. Going forward, uh, we are projecting a pronounced slowdown. And the numbers are very clear. The global economy delivered 5.5% growth last year. It's a, it's a, it's a remarkable number. Uh, but going forward this year, we will see growth around 4%. And the next year, that number is going to go down to 3%. Why? Because uh, basically, pent up demand will not be there. Demand is going to be smaller. In addition, uh, policymakers around the world are withdrawing these support measures. So the policy support is going to be withdrawn. So uh, between those two, we will have a slowdown. Of course, uh, there are risks down the road, and those risks are significant. COVID is still with us. We are experiencing, of course, the Omicron wave. Uh, 
debt levels are quite high. Uh, we have inflationary pressures. We have climate related challenges. When you put all of these with very limited policy space in emerging market developed economies, these risks increase the possibility of a hard landing. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.